Welcome to Heather Ewing, the CRE Rundown. I am your host, Heather Ewing, the founder and CEO of Abstract Commercial Real Estate here in downtown Madison, Wisconsin. And today I have none other than the radiant Ashley Quinto Pablo. Ashley, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to join you. Well, I have been very excited to have this podcast. We have a great affinity one for vibrant colors and also great gems. So I'm glad that we both showed up with them today. Me too. Me too. You have a very beautiful and distinct style and uh, it is always fun to see what you're wearing. <laughs> well, thank you. And I'm always excited to see what you're wearing. So it's kind of like two, two little mirrors out shining around. <laughs> so, um, Ashley, for those that don't know you like I do, Give them a, a quick little update. Who is Ashley and what are you all about? Sure. So I, uh, I t I'm a serial entrepreneur. Today I'm focusing on my virtual assistant firm, my VA Rocks. Uh, I come from a um, software and sales background. Uh, and I like to dabble in, in all sorts of stuff, which I think is actually um, a trademark of Wisconsin women in particular, that we have 17 different projects and 12 side hustles. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're up to all sorts of things. But I wrote a book, Executive Motherhood, The Art of Having It All Without Doing It All, that came out last year. And um, and I have uh, uh, lots of clubs and networking events and uh, things that I'm excited about as well. Definitely. And that's actually how we met several years ago was through networking. I just remember I was like, oh, there's the woman with the great vibrant sunglasses that I wanted to meet for a while. So <laughs> it goes back then. <laughs> but um, one of the things I do love about you is the creative spirit. And I think a lot of times when people hear creative spirit, they think of the arts, they think of poetry, different things along those lines. But to your point, coming out in founding the VA Rocks and really helping so many women and entrepreneurs. It's really a pivotal creation that you've created, which came out of kind of the, the chaos of COVID. Do you want to share more about that? Sure. Well, I think you and I share a perspective that the arts can really influence business and um, and in the most beautiful ways. I consider myself a very creative person. I consider myself very artsy. Um, and I think that that is nothing but a an advantage as a business person. Mm -hmm. And I have thought that way for a long time. Actually, I think my, right. um, my theater background helped me get ahead in tech uh, because I really stood out as being someone who was Com you know, comfortable performing and talking to people. And that translated into speaking at technical conferences. And I do think the um, creative brain required for building a business is, um, uh, is the, is the fun part of business for sure. I would agree with that. And I think too, there is kind of a stereotypical thought when they hear creative, they think of the person who is unorganized, <laughs> can't meet deadlines, you know, is always kind of in a, in a space of disarray. But I think you've proven through your various business entities. And then, of course, your presentations, just how organized and how well creativity can work with the linear left brain as well. Absolutely. Well, I think also, I mean, separately, I think we've been really trained to view soft skills as less mm -hmm. valuable than mm -hmm. their harder technical counterparts. But um, but the things that have made me successful are all would all be considered soft skills. And um, uh, the technical stuff isn't that fun uh, for me. And um, right. uh, and as uh as hard as it is maybe to um, to say and to hear, the thing that will propel us forward is not our ability to solve uh, an equation that 700 other people have solved today, but to be creative in new ways and innovative ways that no one has done in the last century. So I think um, I think we should be, you and I should be 
very proud of um of our creative our of our creativity and embrace it and um actually every few years i reread um an artist's way i think it's one of the best um i think it's one of the best um uh business books although most people would not consider it a business book at all julia cameron's that is one on my two reads and it has been popping up so you're my witness. I am going out and buying that one. It will be read in the next two months. <laughs> oh, you're going to love it. It's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, in tying into the soft skills and also the creative mind, you hit, you hit on authenticity, which is a huge separator, especially I think in the arenas that we work. And so many people are trying to create a front of who they are, and maybe they hit hit their stride with it 80% of the time. The other times they're fumbling and who you meet is completely different than who you might see on TV, on different social media, things of that nature. And that's something that I think we can both be very proud of too, is you get what you see. We are very direct, straightforward. And I would I would say unabashedly happy with how we create things and there's always room for improvement, but of really putting that authenticity forward to be ourselves and help in our given areas. Absolutely. I think it's more, um, it's more fun, of course, to, uh, to, I mean, I think that's one of the things about that I love most about getting older is the sort of sense of, uh, well, I don't actually care what other people are doing or thinking. I'm going to mm -hmm. do what I want to do. And uh, mm -hmm. I haven't always felt like I've had that freedom. And it is incredible. Right. But also, yeah. you know, if we're, um, uh, I think, I think a lot about being innovative. And, you know, my first, mm -hmm. um, my first company I started when I was in my, um, in my early 20s, I think it was 24 or 25. And um, I, sold my apartment which literally um was my life savings right so i had like scrimped right. and saved to buy an apartment i bought myself an apartment pretty early um and then i sold it to start this business i cashed in my 401k which was small but mighty and would be yeah. so much mightier today um right and i think about the hubris that comes from starting a business that young and how mm -hmm. um ridiculous it seems that i thought i had everything that it took to run a business that early. And, right. um, and I think we are really trained to value that, especially in entrepreneurship and innovation, that sort of the young um, uh, disruptor with lots of energy ha seems to uh, be really highly valued. But right. having been that person, I can tell you that she was kind of an idiot and <laughs> you'd be much better off with the Ashley in her 40s really knows what's going on and, you know, really has, uh, you know, 20 years of experience to, uh, right. to include in the equation that I just didn't have before. I can completely relate to that as well, too. I, I was a little bit later of a bloomer than you. I started in my mid thirties and, um, I, I think back to the different early businesses that I started and it was just like, Oh, Heather, <laughs> you know, it's like, you didn't have the mentorship. You didn't have the proper amount of funds, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But I think it's one of those, it really does fast track your mm -hmm. learning curve. I, I don't recommend it to a lot of people. You know, I still think um, create a, a good plan and then strategize and execute in that way, like we did in our 40s. But um, there is a, a great learning curve with it. And I would say those that are able to stay and continue forward um, really get to accentuate and utilize that learning curve whereas others mm -hmm. i think it just takes them down and they never get back up so they don't recover from it it is hard i mean it's um the failure of my first business was one of the hardest things i've ever had to had to overcome and i mean it failed spectacularly um i and mm -hmm. i like, graduated from that experience with um nothing but debt and a and a um a an assurance of, for everyone around me that I would never make that mistake again. I would never no. trust myself with all of my savings poured into one thing. And I said for a long time, you know, it, um, I'll, I'll always have someone else who's responsible for making sure that my paycheck is there on Friday afternoon, like they yeah. promised that it would be. But, um, you know, 
after a, a few years of that, actually, they can mess, somebody else can mess it up too. Big corporations can mess it up. And, and yeah. uh, you know, people that you think absolutely have it all together um, don't. Yeah. And so yeah. at some point I said, well, I mean, somebody's going to mess it up. It might as well be me again. And, uh, and of course the, um, the second time around as a full-time entrepreneur has been much, much better than the first time. But, um, but yeah, I have absolutely been there in this, in the, oof, in the devastation that is a business that didn't yeah. go so well. Yeah. And I can relate to that too. And I had a couple incarnations earlier, actually three. And again, I, I look back and like, well, they should have been hobbies versus starting an LLC and getting it registered and all of that. But the nice thing about that was, is I learned very quickly where my strengths were, where my weaknesses were, and really what it would take to have a successful business. So for that, I am eternally grateful, but I am a big proponent of getting the right mentors. And mm -hmm. also you're going to have to work hard. You know, it's part of it. And I think some people just aren't willing to do that. And so I think it's also finding of how much are you willing to give? And um, it's, mm -hmm. it's really taking that honest and open look at yourself and who you are and how you're wired and what you genuinely want versus getting stuck in the hype of, you know, churning, burning all the crazy hours and, and being an entrepreneur. So. Well, Heather, what were your three businesses before this one? So I had an art business, which I had for many years. I was with the, I would uh, paint oil paintings for the Prada homes, also commercial and residential businesses. It was growing through 2007, eight, nine, but just not to the um, amount that I wanted. And then one was a fitness also. And then the third was a life coaching. So again, all different parts of me that I still have incorporated on a personal basis now, but mm -hmm. um, varying levels, different struggles, lots of learning lessons. And um, I would say of them, the art was the most successful of the three. And then of course, getting into the commercial real estate, that's where it took off for me. So Well, the first three sound like, um, sound like, like maybe uh, the hardest businesses I can think of. Right. Those are, right. Those are tough, tough. Yeah. The nice thing though is, and I've always joked about this. I'm like, after you put your art out there, which is your heart and soul, right? I'm like cold calling, sales. It <laughs> it's very it feels very topical, right? They're not saying like, yeah, this is not a painting, or you know, some would not like it and others would just think it's the best thing. It's such a subjective means that I agree. It was um very unique and um, challenging arena is a little less black and white than some of the others. Mm -hmm. So now if you were to go back into a time machine, let's say 10, 20 years, what is a piece of advice that you would give yourself now for where you at and what you've accomplished to bring you to that next phase? You know, I, um, I think the, the thing that I have learned that has really kickstarted um, success for me has been sort of realizing that actually no one has it really well figured out. And, um, and folks are, um, folks are, uh, are messy and, uh, and experimental and that's all great. So that means that I can be messy and experimental too. And, uh, and that I have a right to I have a right to be as messy and experimental as the next person. I think sometimes it's um, it's hard because you don't necessarily, especially on other entrepreneurs, it can feel like everyone else it has everything all together and knows exactly what a back office should look like. And it, you know, it can feel like everybody else had like was taken aside and told things about business that I just I wasn't there that day. I guess maybe I called in sick. I don't know. And um. <laughs> And actually, it's just so much more important to take the ad bat and give things a try and be willing to, uh, to your point, put yourself out there and see what happens mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and do that over and over and over again with all of the opportunities and, and uh, pretty shortly, it will turn into something really great. But, you yeah. know, that, that, uh, that be writing a book um, is a really good example of that, that many people say, oh, I would love to like, okay, well then do it. 
because there's nothing, right? nothing that, yes. uh, that I did that was, I think I, I, I don't want to be flip about it because it is an, ex it is a whole thing, but I like wrote, I read the artist's way and then I, um, right. I read, uh, the miracle morning and I literally mm -hmm. woke up early and, uh, did yeah. the morning pages and then started writing and, uh, and it, that's how, that's how you do it. You just do it. You don't, you don't need anyone's permission and you certainly, mm -hmm. uh, you certainly don't need to have all of your ducks in the row before taking a big step. And that is a huge one to impress upon people is that you don't have to have all of your ducks in a row. I think it's one of those where I know speaking from my past experience too of, you know, wanting everything to be perfect. That really was an excuse, which I realized at different times, right? Mm -hmm. And honing in, as you mentioned, on that consistency and discipline. A lot of people, what I've noticed is just they cannot give themselves a command or make a, you know, a promise to themselves and actually keep it. And it it's kind of frightening almost to the degree that that really affects so many people. But once you can get a pretty good relationship with commitment, dedication, consistency, like your book, like your TEDx, beautiful things can and do happen in results. So um, I love that. And also it's, it's a great example. You're a mom of two, you're married, you have a busy business, a busy life. You're at a ton of different networking events. You're not just sitting around. So I think you're a perfect example of how people can make a choice and bring some of these desires and dreams to fruition. That, that is so sweet of you. But I have to tell you, I do not feel like I have, uh, I don't think I have, uh, I don't have, think I have a very good handle on uh, keeping myself accountable. And actually it's one of the things that I really look up to you about. And I think over here <laughs> somewhere, I have a quote from you about exactly that because uh because it's hard it's hard um it and is. i one of the things that i think a lot of um entrepreneurs in particular um talk about when they're becoming clients of my va business is that right. they want an accountability partner because it is mm -hmm. hard to keep yourself on task and it is hard to make a goal and then keep it for yourself there's something so insidious about your ability to let yourself off the hook and yes. uh you know I agree. If we could all get past it, I think I'm still in the midst of figuring of of figuring out how to keep that deal with myself. You do that beautifully. Well, I think we all have a high bar for ourselves. But what I've noticed too in myself and in others is when it's topical, meaning not you know not really heart centered or something really big and um, pivotal to them, that it's much easier to slough it off, myself included. Like I've been thinking about this with training for the Chicago Marathon is that I don't schedule in when I'm going to run for the day. I either think of either it's going to be in the morning, once in a great while, an afternoon or an evening. And the reason why that's easier for me is because it's such a well-worn groove, right? You always hear about the mm -hmm. neural pathways and things. But for me, I really equate it to um, health in so many ways my personal health, my mental health, my financial health, and just feeling good. And so for me, it's it's easier to, to hit those um, training schedules and things like that, because I know it's not if, I always say it's when. And sometimes I have been like a small child of like fighting against myself and it's suddenly 10 p.m. at night, but it's like you're getting your butt out there and you're doing it. And it, that can really be painful in the wintertime. So um, I think it's finding that deeper meaning. And mm -hmm. also I'm a big believer that um, pain pushes you, vision pulls, right? And um, most people are motivated through pain to avoid the pain versus just the front front end of pleasure. So for me, it, it's looking at the pain to avoid that is how I try to reframe things for myself to keep me on track. That's really interesting. Heather, you are yeah. a marvel to watch, I have to say. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Likewise, my dear. <laughs> but, um, you know, speaking of all the busyness, all the things that are pulling us in various directions, what is something you, how do you like to de-stress? What is something that you might want to share with our audience here? 
Well, um, I recently, I think because so much of my creative brain is, uh, is spent being creative uh, in my business, I have started um, really loving craft projects that have a um, yeah. clear set of instructions followed mm -hmm. by a predictable result. There's something that my brain really yes. needs in that sequence. Mm -hmm. And um, as I used, I used to spend um, uh, my free time doing something very, very creative or painting just like you, yeah. well, not as great as you, yeah. but, um, or, uh, or making, th you know, making things from yeah. scratch sort of from, you know, nothing to whatever was in my head. But now what my brain needs is uh, model making. I think I really uh, feel like quite a nerd when I say that, um, mm -hmm. but I'll make a dollhouse for like a whole Saturday and just follow the instructions one by one. I um, I made a paper um, Sagrada Familia, which is the, um, uh, the Basilica uh, that Dolly, uh, designed it, it it's a it's a ridiculously detailed little paper oh, model definitely. it took me a mm -hmm. full month of a lot of i think i i spent many 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 i spent too many days on that to um but i have i've done the titanic and the white house and <laughs> um and i'm still i'm still working my way through these but i think that the you know the hey here is exactly what you do follow this to the letter yeah. and then you will get this very predictable result is uh right. is where i'm spending a lot of time lately for sure well and that makes sense right because if you think about it running you know you found it in a running your own business of you're creating the entire infrastructure and a lot of that is you know creating the vision <laughs> finding this finding that so there there isn't a clear path you yeah. have to create the path each and every day, quarterly and beyond. So to me, that makes sense. And it, it's interesting in parallel. That's where, too, I like that's why I like running, too, of like 30 minutes. You have it. You know, it's like you've accomplished it. You've checked it off or I've been I got a little uh, binder and it, it's fun. It's like a little spiral bound. And so now I'll paint you know, and it's only, I don't know, six inches by six inches, but it allows me to accomplish it in an hour or something yeah. where I get to create the color, you know, the creamy texture of the paints, all of that. But it's not the long game, like a commercial mm -hmm. real estate deal of 12 months later, you're just about wrapping it up. So it, it makes sense when I take a step back to think of why we we're both enjoying those types of projects. Oh, absolutely. By the way, the painting behind you is stunning. Oh, thank you. I wish I could say it's mine. It's not. <laughs> I'll have to put one of mine back there. Um, yeah. TEDx speech. So I would love to do one down the road. So I'm going to have to create a written plan for this. But tell the audience more about that. I still, I just love that. Thank you. Well, um, I I made it a goal. It was my goal in um, 2018 that I was going to give a TEDx. And um I, uh, I talked about it all the time and I, um, I applied all, so you could, so the trick to applying to a TEDx is finding where to apply is that there is not a central hub for all of them. Um, they all have slightly different criteria. Um, but I was applying to everything that I could find. And I sort of made a deal with myself that I would apply to everything within, um, driving distance of, mm -hmm. of my home in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, finally, I had a um, networking lunch with someone and I happened to mention, you know, these are my goals. And I mentioned it because I was talking about it all the time. You know, here are my goals and here's what I'm up to and here's what I'm thinking a lot about. And um, my companion said, oh, actually, I also gave a TEDx. It did an amazing thing for my career. And um, mm -hmm. I think the one that I, uh, I was at is looking for submissions. Uh, would you like me to put your name forward? And I said, oh my goodness, right. yes. And she emailed right. me that afternoon and she said, well, the deadline is today. So um, if mm -hmm. you're ready, I'm ready too. And you know, I had um, I had already been sending everyone my submissions. And so mm -hmm. I had everything ready to go. I didn't need to start from scratch. And so I said, well, yep, yeah. I'm, yep I can have everything to you if you can have it to them. And that's the one that ultimately... Um, said yes, but I mean, I was applying to um, Dubuque and 
Um, I was applying to one at Rush University in Chicago and, um, mm. uh, and I met, um, uh, I met someone who was one of the, um, one of the, uh, the, the pickers on the mm -hmm. TEDx Chicago women one. And so I had an opportunity right. to ask her about from the other side, like, you know, right. how many submissions right. do you really get? And, um, yeah. she, her, she reported that it was, it was a truly staggering amount. Uh, and it's, it is hard to stand. And I was, you know, I'm ready to talk about like motherhood and I'm a woman from Wisconsin. I have a very right. keen um, understanding of how uncool that is in Chicago. <laughs> you know, like no one is it was like, oh, what we really need is a suburban mom. Um, and, uh, and there I was wanting to talk about being a suburban mom, essentially. Um, but, uh, you know, you they, they get pummeled with, um, they get pummeled with, submissions and so yeah you know you can't submit once and call it a day you have to know your submissions out too so you exactly know. i love it no and it you think about it too you're authentic you're real and sharing a message that really helped a lot of women and families so kudos yeah. to you for your perseverance with that and i also believe like the old saying luck favors the prepared it's so true because yeah. if you would have been waiting to get it, you know, and then start creating everything, this, that, and the other thing, it just doesn't work. And I've noticed too, people always want to, you know, put everything on hold until they know it's a green light and then they can do mm -hmm. something. It's like, you have to invest the time and energy ahead of time and know that some way, shape or form, you'll, you'll find a way through. It may not be in the near future, but as you get back up and continue forward that at some point it, it's going to happen. So that's a, that's great, Ashley. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Heather, I think you and I have that in common that we are really willing to, to um, uh, we're willing to take the at bat and I, you know, we're yes. willing to do it over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. not everybody has, has the chutzpah, but you and I do. No, for sure. no. And I think that's where it's hard to relate sometimes because it's like, they get a couple of no's and suddenly they're done. And it's like, you haven't even began. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, what do you mean you're done? <laughs> but, um, well, as we bring this to the finish line, my dear, what is something you want to impart upon our, our audience? Maybe something to focus for the rest of the quarter, the year, or just something in life? What a beautiful, rich question. I think, um, uh, one of the things that I have been thinking about a lot is the fallacy that it's easier to do it myself. And at least once a day, I think about, um, uh, there's a, there's a really great quote in, um, a who, not how that talks mm -hmm. about what could you accomplish if you didn't have to do it yourself. And mm -hmm. I think taking, taking that labor out of the equation has been, really interesting for me personally. I know it has for you too. And, um, and so I think, uh, identifying what in your, what in your sphere should get done without you is a really fascinating way to start looking at our work and, um, and, and to, and it's hard, right. It's hard to stop being precious about, stop, stop, uh, being perfect about everything. And, release a little bit into that. I think it's a, it's a certainly a difficult process, but a really, really worthwhile one. Definitely. No, I agree completely. And with that, how do people find you, Ashley? How do they learn more about my VA rocks, how they can get help and also, you know, relieve some of that time and also reach new heights in their life and career? Well, you know, I'm very, very active on LinkedIn as Ashley Quinto Powell. And um, the website for my business is myva.rocks. Perfect. Ashley, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a true joy and pleasure connecting with you and also sharing some of your great experience and insights with our audience. Thank you for having me, Heather. You bet. And folks, until next time, Here's to living fully and that journey and the path. Thanks so much.